and that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm so happy to be reading again to you children because you know how important it is. I want you to read this summer, and we're going to do the same thing we did last summer, but only a little bit different, like a lot of things. We're going to do the reading of the stories over the Internet, and you can tune in and see us every day, Tuesday through Friday. And I'll be reading on Wednesday, but all the programs are going to be great. And uh, this is the book log. You can come in June 8th and uh, get your book log. You know how you do that. Write your stories down that you've read so you can keep up with them. And uh, we are going to have a really, really good program, so don't miss any of them. And today we're going to read a special story. But first, you know we got to get those wiggles out, so let me get my music going. Got it. The first one's one of my favorite. It's about a ghost cat. Right here. This is the book. And the author, who, the person who writes the book, his name is Eve Bunning, her name. And the guy who does the pictures in the book, his name is Kevin Berry. Someday he may want to grow up and write stories or even draw pictures for a book. So, we're going to get started. Are you ready? Everybody listening? Here we go. This ghost cat, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. He can disappear and reappear whenever he wants to. And he lives in a lighthouse off the ocean. And the lighthouse is a place that's very tall, a tower. And up at the top is a light, and that light shines all out into the ocean and tells the ships where to go so they don't get lost. Now, some of you might have seen a lighthouse when you've been to the beach or to the ocean. Ghost cat. I'm a cat, a ghost cat. My name is Sailor Boy. I live in the Port Carrick Lighthouse with my friend, Miss Maggie McCullen. I was her ordinary cat once, and when I passed away, I made a decision not to leave. So here I am. The people in Port Carrick are proud of Miss Maggie. She keeps that big light going, they say. Never misses a night. Without her, there'd be boats smashed to pieces on the rocks. You can't count the lives, Miss Maggie, and her light up in the top of that big tower, the how many lives she saved. Boats often pass close to the lighthouse, and they sound their horns to thank her. Honk, honk. They sound those horns and wave to Miss Maggie. I, the people of Port Carrick, murmur, but it's a terrible, lonely life that she lives out there. She lives there by herself, all by herself in that lighthouse. They don't know, they don't know about me, Sailor Boy, the cat. I can be visible or invisible, whichever I choose. It's fun. I like daytime in the lighthouse. But I like nighttime more when the sun sets and it's red on the horizon and dust drapes itself over the ocean. Our duties begin 
Miss Maggie and I, we climbed the 50 steps, round and round and round up to the tower. She does all she needs to do to start the, the uh, big beacon so that it shines its warning across the dark ocean. I watch, I know it all by heart. Miss Maggie, she pets me. Purr, purr. You could run this lighthouse by yourself, sailor boy. You're one smart cat, I know. And I love Miss Maggie. Turn the page. Here we are. Now and then, we have a visitor who pays to see the lighthouse. Or many visitors actually pay, pay to see the lighthouse. Imagine, I make myself invisible and I tease them with ghostly purrs. <laughs> or a little scratch. Or, or a nibble. Sometimes I even tug on a shoelace till it comes loose or drag a tissue out of an open purse. Such fun to watch those people's faces. If Miss Maggie, oh, if she sees me, she frowns at me and I stop right away. But one day, a man stepped on my ghost tail and I, let out a howl. The visitors all around said, what is that? What was that? Miss Maggie calmed them down. Oh, sometimes a crow lands on top of the tower and it makes a noise like that. But all was well, except for my tail wasn't well. It hurt. Time passes and visitors, they come and go. And today, Sissy Curry, a niece to Miss Maggie, she's come for a visit. I thought she was a little foolish, for I could see a storm was brewing. She was to leave before dark. But it's dark already, and the wind, ooh, it's howling, and the sea is snarling, and it's hitting the rocks outside, and it's going to be bad. Now, she has to stay the night. So I have to stay invisible. Sometimes visitors make too much fuss over me. Sissy Maggie says, it's time for me to go up and light the light up in the tower. So she leaves her niece at the kitchen fire with a cup of hot cocoa. Then she and I, the ghost cat, we hurry up the steps to the tower. Round and round and round we go. A long ways up that tower. But catastrophe, oh no, in her haste, Miss Maggie trips on a step. Oh no, step 30, and she can't get up. It's my ankle, she groans. I, I think it might be broken, sissy, she saw. Sissy, sissy, come and help me, sissy, sissy. But her knees can't hear through the shriek of all that wind and the battering of the waves. Sissy does, doesn't know that Miss Maggie has fallen. Oh no, here we go. Well, Miss Cookie. What's going on? Poor Miss Maggie, she thinks she broke her ankle. I take a minute to comfort my friend, laying my face against hers. Then I become visible, and I leap down all the steps to fetch Sissy. Oh my, she says, I don't, didn't know. I didn't know Miss Maggie had a cat, and she tries to pet me. I have to make her understand what happened. I run to the steps and back. I run to the steps and back, meowing so loudly. Run and come back and run and come back. Meow, meow, meow. That means help. Please, please, sissy, listen to what I'm telling you. At last she understands and follows me to the steps. Up, 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 round and round. And she sees Miss Maggie. Oh, Aunt Maggie, hold on to me. I will try to get you down, but Miss Maggie gasped, no, no, child, go up and light the beacon, the light 
in the top of the lighthouse for the ships, their lives at stakes. But, but I don't know how. Oh, Miss Maggie's voice is more forceful. Go, sailor boy. Sailor boy will show you. Your cat? Yes. I run ahead of her up the rest of the steps. The lighthouse seems to rock in the gust of wind. The big beacon stands tall and still, and I know what to do. I jump to where the matches are kept and then to the wick, touching each with my paw, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, Sissy understands. Hallelujah! She finally lights the wick, and the great beacon comes to life, cutting through the dark and shining out its warning warming beams to the ships, telling them how to go in the ocean. You're wonderful, Sissy tells me. I think she is too. We hurry down to see Miss Maggie. Is it lit, she asks. It is, says Sissy. Now we're going to take care of you. In the kitchen, she wraps cold rags on Miss Maggie's ankle and the wind blasts around the walls, and Sissy has to shout, Soon as the storm passes, I'll go fetch Dr. Smith, and I can stay for a while and look after you and the light, now that your extraordinary cat has shown me how. But I don't see him. Where is he? Oh, he's around, Miss Maggie smiles at invisible me. Sometimes, he just likes to disappear. I suppose maybe I am extraordinary, but who wants to be ordinary? And that's the end of our story. Did you like it? I love it. It's one of my favorite, the ghost cat. Here we go. We'll put it down here. Now then, don't forget, you can write this one down because we've read it together. You can even read one together or have one read to you. So put it in your reading log when you come to get it. And it's called The Ghost Cat. Now, that's the end of our story for today. But don't forget, I'll be back on Wednesday and somebody will be here every day for you to hear a story. So don't forget, you make my heart beat. You always have and always will. So you go and make me proud, okay?